Well, I got a little email in my uh, inbox, uh -huh. and <clears throat> it is from <clears throat> Josh at my dog food supplier. Okay. Yeah, and I just lovely, and uh, it, it's an important notice about a price adjustment on Akana dog food, which we use. Unfortunately, the manufacturers recently increased their costs, necessitating us to adjust the prices of certain items. As always, we will strive to keep our prices competitive and absorb any additional expenses whenever possible. However, we're going to have to yank the price up to keep our <laughs> profits up. So fuck you, Tony. Yeah. I didn't need all that from Jurassic Bark. There's some advertisement. <laughs> Remember the first episode I advertised my friend's uh, hot dog company? Yeah. Sausage company. Bad. B-A-H-D. That's <laughs> my, my, my good mate. Abby's company, bad nice. hot dogs. And uh, now I've just done it from a dog food company, which I shouldn't have because they've just fucking stiffed me and said uh, the prices are going up <laughs> for Jurassic Park. In this comedy podcast, the people are represented by two separate yet equally unimportant comedians. This guy. I thought Flat Earth might be something you'd get on board with. And this guy. That'll show the BBC what they're <laughs> missing out on. <laughs> These are their stories. Silence in the court. Everything, oh, they, everything's a... going up now. Everything's so expensive. Oh, my God. And because we're lazy, we just, oh, yeah, fuck it. All right. Yeah, yeah, we're like boiling frogs. <laughs> Aren't, they just turn it up a little bit, a little bit. And then you, oh, then you got to go buy only bargains and eat stuff you weren't expecting to eat. Yeah. McDonald's has stayed pretty low. We'll just keep eating that. Is there an echo when I talk too loud? I can't hear anything. It sounds mm. all right to me. I was going to try and start a tradition. At every episode, I would talk about the sound for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's my sound? It becomes a thing. Um, it's like Brad yeah. Pitt has to eat in every movie. Does he? That's his thing, yeah. Brad Pitt eats in every movie. What, what? Sam Rockwell dances in every movie. So why does um, Brad Pitt eat in every movie? It's, what is that? For some reason, they all have a thing that they do. Oh, that they wow. insist on. Just like a fun... The, yeah. So then like... Quentin Tarantino puts feet in all his movies. Ooh. Um, I'm not sure about feet, people. <laughs> I'm a judgy fucker sometimes, and uh, yeah, not sure about that. <laughs> I went to one of them... Uh, you know, what are they called? Um, oh, what's the thing called? Uh, something garden. Torture garden? Oh, yeah. What were you doing there? So this is about, like... 25 years ago it was before my wife um mm. but me and phil nickel had just done the banana cabaret <laughs> and phil went oh did you hear about this there's a torture garden on it i went we've got to go <laughs> so we were pretty juiced up and uh i was uh, luckily i was i wore silver leather flares on stage mm. anyway and i thought so all i have to do is like take my shirt off and just go into my silver leather fl flares and phil <laughs> he he went with his boxer shorts, but rolled them up, and then <laughs> tied his t-shirt up. And that, those were our outfits. So we went there, and they let you in. They let us in. Unbelievable! When when people were in these extravagant, crazy outfits, and it was mental. But we we were such two moron Canadians. It just we just didn't belong right from the get go. Everyone's all sexy and being all gross and sexy. Yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, Going into these different rooms, you know, everyone's dancing in the main room, but you go into these little side rooms and there, there's naughtiness going on there. And, and things where you think you've, uh, you know, you think you're a pr pretty cool guy, seen it all, but you walk in and go, oh dear. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my, excuse me, madam, but that, do you know, who are, what, oh. <laughs> but I went into one of the dungeony type things down the bottom and there's a dude and he was having a good old whack off on some ladies' boots. Oh wow! That Just was all do part it. of the thing. Yeah. How did we get onto this? Um, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> oh, well, it's oh, funny feet. enough because we're talking about the Romans, and the Romans loved an orgy. Well, they loved did an they? orgy. Oh, I, I thought they did. I thought they invented sexuality. <clears throat> uh, I, I think humans have been at it long before them, but I don't. Um, I think yeah, I think well, I think the idle rich always get up to shit like that. That's don't they? true. That is true. So they, the they had works, less. Yeah, we have like one percent own ninety percent of all of the money now, but I think back then in Rome it was like 
less than a half a percent had 99.9 percent .9 of everything mm. so those ones at the, that top yeah i bet they uh, they definitely got up to that sort of thing and then yeah. then there was em some emperors would try and humiliate senators if they were get they thought they were a bit uppy there's stories of like making their uh, you know caligula everyone knows about the caligula stuff mm. getting yeah. their, their to <clears throat> getting their wives to be with other chaps soldiers stuff like that just to humiliate and Wow. Cuck them, cuck them or whatever yeah. it is. But, I, yeah, I think they were pretty much up to it. But I don't think all the the 40% of the population that were slaves, I don't think they were up to it. No, much. they weren't up to it. They, no. were, they were deep in a mine in Spain <laughs> digging out <laughs> silver to, yeah. f to fuel Hadrian's bid for the emperorship. And they weren't looking at each other going, oh, you got nice boots. Do you mind if I... Come on. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to jerk off on your boot, on your sandal. On your sandals. <laughs> no, they they were they were just busy not trying to trying to not die. Yeah. And then I suppose, well, I imagine the senatorial class and all them they were up to it probably. But yeah, I think they probably did uh, a bit of orgying. But even But now, that's very un-Roman yeah, in a way cuz they used to pride themselves on being like a uh like a real militaristic tough we're not like those uh, effeminate Eastern, you know, the people in Persia, the Parthians and all that. They, mm. they would tell themselves that they were all effeminate, not like us Romans. So the Roman Republic was real stern. So would, when you yeah. look at their, the busts of the senators from before the empire, you know, when it was mm. just the, Ro uh, the Republic, the, the more grizzled. They used to, all their busts were really grizzled faces. They're all tough looking. If you see a guy called Sulla, Sulla, yeah. Lucius Cornelius Sulla, he was the very first, well, actually, he was the second dictator. There was a dictate, someone did a dictatorship in the 300s BC, but then Sulla came along, became the dictator to sort shit out in the Civil War, and then stayed dictator for a little bit, put up his conscriptions where he just pulled a Stalin and killed shitloads of his enemies and he thought right I think I've got rid of all the troublemakers and then he gave it back and said okay and now you can have your consul again and he retired probably the only dictator one of the only dictators in history who died of peacefully of natural, natural causes. causes mind you Stalin died of natural causes didn't he you did he yeah do you ever see uh what was that comedy they made about Stalin the death of Stalin is that it yeah he, oh Armando yeah Iannucci, yeah yeah where they were all like he so Stalin's dying of something, and you're like, oh, 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 and everyone's like, too kind of too scared to go in and help, because <laughs> they're thinking, what if I help him, he survives, and then I've still got a chance to be killed. Let's just see. <laughs> they're all looking at each other. Just see how this plays out. Yeah. Ooh, he is in a bad way. <laughs> he, there's a bad dude. In a bad way, right there, brother. <laughs> Stalin is sick. Yes, he is. <laughs> he does not look good. But you remember, <clears throat> you remember how many of us he's killed? A lot. <laughs> so let's just see how this Let's pans go. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about the dark arts. That's what Stalin used to talk about. Did he? Everything would come across... Well, what did he write? He would get these names of people, so people would just job each other in and go, "Oh, so and so is an enemy of the, of the party," and then he would go, "I forget what he wrote. It was something so sinister." He would put a mark in red pencil beside it, and it would, it wasn't exterminate, but it was something like end or oh. oh. Let's have a look. I wonder if it's yeah. Google that because yeah. it, it's chilling. He would say. And he personally did it, like hundreds, like thousands and thousands of people he'd go. I don't know how you'd Google that. That's quite interesting. How do you Google? What did Stalin write? Beside people's names. Yeah. <laughs> I'd Google it, but I'm in such a tight um, uh, compartment that I could only use one hand on the laptop. Oh, yeah, God. Is that... You, yeah. you that's look at that. Can't even I, Google. So, try, let's see. Let's find out. Yeah, let's go. Joseph Stalin would say... Um, no. Would um, write. A good book, while you're doing that, I'll yeah, tell yeah, the yeah. listeners. A good book. 
is uh, The Court of the Red Czar by Simon Sebag, Simon Sebag Montefiore. And he wrote The Young Stalin as well. Um, this is just saying about the books he's written. Right. Did you write beside people's names? Yeah. Oh. Then it's just got, it just says his books. He was a voracious reader. He was. He was actually quite clever. 20,000 books he had in his library. An autodidact. Yeah. He wrote. Yeah. Uh, uh, busy I'll, I'll boy. Remember, I'll remember it for next. He was a busy boy. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, he was quite a good poet, apparently. In Georgian, obviously. And he was going to go into the seminary, and then he thought, nah, not doing that. Oh, really? But um, how did we get on to that? Sulla, Sulla. Yes, Sulla. if you see Sulla's uh, bust yeah. of Lucius Cornelius Sulla, his nose is broken off in it, but he looks like a fearsome guy. He's an interesting character, Sulla. Yeah. If you ever get a chance to read about him? He was like a minor aristocrat, real minor. They were quite poor, didn't have much money, but he still had a name that went way, way back. But not a, a storied family, like a minor... Mm. A minor aristocrat or whatever. And, but he used to hang around with all the actors. and Like, actors were virtually considered the same as prostitutes. Wow. <laughs> and comedians and all, all of us would be <laughs> considered like that. But he hung out, and he was a, quite a ladies' man. And he had an aunt who died, and she left him some money. And he got, ooh, we'll go a bit of money. And then one, this courtesan or whatever, like a prostitute-type lady or whatever that... She, he was her favorite, and she left him all the money she had earned from wow. her, her sex in business. And then he went, well, oh, I might make a little run for government here. And that's how he got started. Oh, uh. yeah. I've really s s condensed <laughs> <laughs> how, how to describe Sulla in 40 uh. seconds. Wasn't it, wasn't it the Greeks then that had all the orgies? Was it the Greeks? Uh, <clears throat> no, I think I think uh, I think when it when it became an empire, Augustus made it an empire. He was a bit of a conservative, and he was mm. very very strict. No, no, he had laws of like, ooh, if you have sex outside your marriage, you're you're gonna die. Like he was a real pr pr prim proper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was Augustus. But after him, when it got to Caligula and those emperors, nah, they got yeah. a bit, you know, a bit. A bit inbred -y, probably. You got a bit sticky. You got a bit, it, you know. <laughs> they were putting, when, there was, when you put 15-year-olds on the throne, oh, that's, that's okay. not great, yeah, is it? Nah. And then, and then there, there are people who grew up where their mum was murdered by their dad's lover. Uh, you know, so they're brought up in trauma, and then they're leading from a place of trauma and decadence and mm. don't have to work, and, and they, have the, they, they control... <laughs> All the people, if they want, with the swing of a hand. So they all died violent deaths. But, <laughs> yeah, th so they did get into that. That tiny percent of people got into that orgy and about. How did we get onto that? But that's the thing. Did we got orgy on the mind. It was uh, just because we were talking about the Romans, for some reason. <laughs> that's your go-to, oh, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, they're all banging. <laughs> <laughs> that's your Romans. I think in that movie Caligula as well didn't do the many favors. No, and when you, but then when you go to places like you see the old baths and the things, and then there's like drawings of like massive penises. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, of course, yeah. In Pompeii, there was brothels. There was more brothels than bakeries or something. <laughs> and um, oh, yeah, I know man. you're right. So they were all at it actually. Now come to think of it, so uh, it looks like in that town they were all up to. Yeah. Up to brothel and about. And then they upset the gods yeah. and they went, right, we're going to wipe you out. That's it. So, so that was after Augustus. So that's 79. That would be Claudius, 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 or Tib No, it's after Tiberius. It was, it, it's, oh, no, Nero. So that's Nero's time. So, yeah, things that yeah. decadence probably uh, trickled down a bit. Trickled down decadence. But they loved it. Yeah, you, you follow the penises to on the floor, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah. To take you yeah, to the to brothel. To take you to the thing. <laughs> oh, they were very naughty. <laughs> yeah, but then that's what's happened. The elite have always been the same. They've always had weird sex parties. That's yeah. why Epstein's Island happened. Yeah, that's, so that's the same that's thing. just grotesque. Yeah. Isn't it? Any old dude who fancies someone outside of his age yeah. gap is a wrong one. 
And they're usually people that are quite clever in another way, so they haven't had to develop something. You know, they've got something else that they're good at, apart from royals, because they're fucking just morons. They can't do anything. <laughs> like Andrew, he's a fucking... God, and there can't you believe go. And he wouldn't it, last long in jail, would he? But the thing is, when he said, oh, I don't sweat, I don't sweat. <laughs> I got is that, this, is that, yeah, he said... Yeah, what he said? Something happened to him in the Falklands, and it means that he was unable to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> He's unable to have a moral backbone, <laughs> fucking pedo. <clears throat> Unbelievable, he gets to walk around, isn't it? Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, no, that, like, if you fancy someone outside of, like, 10 years either side of you, I don't know. Okay, I don't, so my uh, missus is 14 years younger than me. Okay, 14, it depends when you're my, older. But then I've been out with somebody who was 18 years older than me. Yeah, so, no, you're fine. Yeah. And also, 14 at your age, Yeah, she's still old. <laughs> so that's yeah. different. That's if fine. Yeah, if you're 30 and it's 14 years, then it's like, hang on a minute. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah. But if, and if, yeah, and if, I, if I like someone 20 years younger than me, 25 years younger, that they would only be, well, they'd be 30, I guess. I don't know. Mm. Just feels like. I know what you mean. If, if you're in your, if you're. In your forties and plus, and you're running around after twenty-year-olds, 20 yeah. Because people are children until they're twenty-five. Yeah, the brain hasn't even finished developing until twenty-five years old. That's why our generation have got so many morons because people were doing drugs before they're twenty-five, and that, <laughs> that's why we're all stunted. So many drugs, Jesus Christ! Yeah. yeah. Nowadays, kids are a bit more cool, I think, on the whole. I they think are, they, yeah. They, they find that a bit distasteful. Yeah, they do. They they only get one life. They they theirs is like I think they look down their noses at that, and they're right to. But Francis Fukuyama told us it was the end of history in the nineties. So we all just thought, well, Soviet Union's been defeated. What could possibly go wrong now? <laughs> it's the nineties. Let's go raving. It's the end of times. We've got nothing to live for. And then all of a sudden, uh oh. Here comes trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we know what we're talking about. <laughs> do you we? Gotta be careful. Yeah, gotta be you careful. Do. Yeah, that's that's a never thought that'd be a thing. We'd walk around worried about that. <laughs> so blatantly as well. It's like if you say anything bad, uh, it's suddenly not... you vanish, and then they go, "Yeah, we did do that." Remember when uh, I I was walking up the escalator in the tube and I saw the poster for the the Book of Mormon, you know, the comedy yeah. play, Smash Hit, and I thought, God, whatever you think about the Mormons, you got to hand it to them. They've got a sense of humor. You know, they're, <laughs> they're good. You know, they didn't kick up a fuss about that. Maybe they did, but you know, I never heard of it. And Mormons will go, oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, take, take piss seriously. out of us. That's all right. That's good. Wish they were all like that. They should all be like that. They go, they yeah, should. yeah, whatever. Yeah, you got us. If you're confident enough in it. But it's got to be a dichotomy to feel like, I, I think any time uh, people have a religion where it's like, you are better than the yeah. people who aren't that by the virtue of just being a thing, saying you're a thing. I think you're up to up to an unhappy life. If you're walking around thinking you're better than, yeah. than the rest of the world or other people, but... Maybe when your life doesn't go the way you want it to go, you're going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm the best. Yeah. Well, I, was in, why would I, I haven't got the things because I'm the best. We're the best. Yeah, we We're really walked a, this. We have walked a tightrope there, haven't we? <laughs> that, was, that was deft. <clears throat> we absolutely danced along a fine line. <clears throat> and everyone knows what we mean. But we ain't said nothing. We ain't said nothing, and we ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> no either. fucking way, man. <laughs> hey, well, wait. So, we we mean the same thing, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh yeah. shit! Don't we have... No, I didn't mean that. No, no, no. I meant the <clears> other <throat> thing. The I'm other just saying, dude. I'm just keeping it positive. I'm just saying yeah. the Mormons uh, got got to hand it to them. Well, well done, them taking it on the chin. All religions could do with a little bit of humor. They could a little bit of humility. Yeah, humility. Let's just, just like, have yeah. a little bit of fun. Go, yeah, 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 you, yeah, we are a bit like that, but come on. Mind you, Richard Dawkins, uh, love Richard Dawkins, but he, he could use a bit of joking as well. He needs to chill out a bit, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, on, mate. it's nice for people to have a religion, you know, when it's, when it's that gent gentle version of them. 
Well, you the, know, when people have the loving version of whatever it is they're into? Well, that's it. It's the fundamentals of most religions are all the same. And you and, should be able... Yeah. And, you know, and you can go, you go, and go, oh, yeah, just be decent to everybody. I like the peaceful ones. Yeah. The ones that that's part of the thing, like, oh, washing the feet. I'll tell you who's... Who's back? For, who's really back from the dead? And pun intended is Jesus, <laughs> because in the <clears throat> he is making a run at it again. Because during the Super Bowl, you know, you watch the Super Bowl and they have these re- millions and millions of dollars spent on all these advertisements. And there's one big funny one from Dunkin' Donuts, and then there was another one from this. Two years ago, it was all crypto, and then they all got sued. But there, then there'd be a car company and but it'll be an electric car and they're all funny adverts. And then all of a sudden this other one, you're going, wow, this is an epic one. And then at the end, you go, what, what is this advertising? Jesus. Wow. Yeah, loads of adverts. In the for Super like, Bowl. Yeah, peace, like, hey, let's all be brothers and sisters and peace and love and Jesus, he's in all of us or something like that. What? He loves, Jesus loves us all. And I, I, I got to be honest. If that was the 25-year-old me, I'd be like, oh, my God. But it's not the same as those old conservative Christians. It's not that mess. It's like a mm. cool message. And there was one, um, what's that Irish actor who's always a bit fighty, Mark Wahlberg? Right. He was in one, an advert, where him and a dude who looks like Jesus said, it's an advert for praying. Wow. Yeah, let's pray. And they did a pray, dear Lord. And they did a spread. And so he's like, religious, hugely religious. Yeah, he's a big Catholic. Uh. Huge. But it, he's, they're kind of normalizing prayer. I don't know. There was something about them that didn't make me go, ooh. Because, you know, when we grew up, we were always trying to push it. You know, we spent a 1,500 years trying to lift the shackles of an mm. oppressive religion off our shoulders and get rid of merry white houses and <laughs> let gay people be gay. And let's all, you know, we were scared of it. Get it off. But this is like a revamped version. And they're going, hey. Uh, and then there was one where they're washing feet. It was a whole deal. Mm, it always starts like that. Is that you Baptists, know? the feet washing? No, no. No, I don't know. I think Jesus washed people's feet, something like that. Oh, so he's a foot person. Ah, oh, God, see, we're back to that. He's a fucking that. weirdo. I told you. <laughs> you got, this is how they get you, Tone. You're already, because you are, you've gone all glossy eyed and gone. Uh, yeah, well, there yeah. might be something. No, this is how they get you, Tone. <laughs> there might be, there might be something in it. Those, those old, uh, those old. Cur- it was a lovely message, but it was the nice version. And you think, oh, but it, we did spend uh, in Europe, didn't we? F- like, that's why we used to mock Americans because they remained really religious, didn't mm. they? When we were getting it off our back, and then all of a sudden, within a generation, then they finally catch up. That's why they're all so woke in America because. They get rid of their religion. They don't know what to do with themselves. And they're going, ah, but I feel like judging people. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like controlling people socially below me somehow. How do I do that? Oh, I'll be, I'll be a, a woke guy. But that's a, So they're kind of behind us by 20 years of, of non-religiosity, uh-huh. I think. But it looks like Christ is making a, making a, a Wait, play. <laughs> He's putting the ball back in the game. He just go- needs to turn up himself. That, he just yeah. turns up. Boom, job done. Yeah, I'd be yeah. there. Yeah, fuck, no, all right. If he's, yeah, no advertisements necessary. No. But they must have, like, there's some God, the, the big God. There must be some money behind it. I don't know who's doing it. Fortunes, mate. Fortunes. The, the Vatican, the, is, they're, they're billionaires, aren't they? But it wasn't like, it was, yeah, I think it might have been Catholic. Because it had a seriousness to it. It didn't have that kind of fairground Protestantism that the Americans do. You know, that kind of, come to Jesus. Nah, yeah. Like, what's that sitcom on Sky? The fabulous oh, gemstones. The, the family. The gemstones. Yeah. Fabulous so, gemstones or something. Something like that. Yeah. The, the amazing. Danny Dudar in it. And Danny McBride, yeah. Yes. Not like that. It had a different vibe. It had a like kind of like, you know, one of them. I was going, that might be Jesus. <laughs> and then the joke was, I, I know I look like him, but I'm not him. And then Mark Wahlberg goes, let's pray to him. And I'm going, what the fuck is Get happening? Get the fucking my TV? real dude. You've got the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, how much is he holding out for? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's he's, got a, get, he's got to get a new agent. That's what that's it a, is. That's a good gig. Oh, your camera went weird. So Yeah, it does that. 
Oh, it's um, nice dropped. I nearly got a Super Bowl advert for Bud Light back maybe oh, 10 really? or 12 years ago. Yeah, and I was penciled. Did I say this last week? No. I uh, might have said it on someone else's podcast. Oh, there you are. <laughs> uh, I've dro it's dropped down. <laughs> oh, hello. Uh. Oh, hello. Hello. I don't know what I'm and, doing. And it was, um, I was penciled for it. It was so much money. It would have changed my life. Oh, really? Life-changing uh, money? Yeah, and I wish they hadn't have told me I was penciled because I just started spending it, going, I'm going to pay oh, off this. Mate. I'm going to pay off that. Then I'm going to get a car. And then I'm going to, oh, we might be able to get a flat one day. And Oh, I was spending it all. And then they went, oh, really sorry, Tom. But they went the other way. Oh, oh why? Oh, that really echoed. They should still I'm, give you some money. They should give you half of it. Because they, they know you're going to go off and spend mm. it. You're going to go to your mind shopping mall. So I wonder if... Spend it all. Maybe, well, maybe because I've talked so positively about the Jesus adverts, maybe next year I might get a job on one of the Jesus adverts. You'd be a great Jesus. Yeah. Well, no, not to be Jesus. I'd oh. even play a bad guy. Be Jesus. <laughs> the be Jesus. <laughs> be Jesus. Be Jesus. Be Jesus. It's an Irish... <laughs> It's a fucking Irish <laughs> advert. Advert. That was advert. like Tom, Tommy Ternan. Advert. I can Tom. say one word like Tommy Ternan. Advert. <laughs> I, I do a better Northern, Northern Irish one. No, I do Northern, that better. No, my granddad. My, I can't do my granddad's accent how he used to talk. Because he went to Canada in the 1930s when he was 30. And... And, but I hate I hate talk and I yeah, I've never heard that I want to talk like well, it it's so like Ian, backwards. Ian so Paisley. It, it, it was about like that, but it was a bit more rare and you couldn't understand what you heard that said <laughs> there like and there's a there's a guy you can Google on YouTube called Strongest Northern Irish Accent. And and there's this weak kid. He's like he's sixteen years old, he's on his way to school in the snow <laughs> and he talked like that and I went, That sounds like granddad. Because most of them are talk a little bit like that there, you know. It's yeah, not yeah, too yeah. bad. Not too bad. Who's your mom? But that, those ones are rare. They're, they're, it's like real 19, <laughs> what I'm guessing is a 1920s Northern Irish accent. They're like, uh, they're, and I, uh, oh, sure. Oh, sure. There, I, I'm on my way to school. I'm on my way. And, oh, it's coming down. The, the snow, it's snowing so bad. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That went all over the place then. I, I and so it does. So it does. It's a, it's a wee accent there, like I, I talk it out the back of my throat there, like. <laughs> but I, I, I honestly couldn't understand him a lot of the time when he'd be talking. I taught him out of World War One. He'd tell World War One stories. World War One. World War One. He used to talk about this big gun that the Germans pulled on a train, and he called it the Jag Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> and it, about this massive gun. I think that's what he was talking about. He was right. talking about a massive gun they pulled on a train. And it fired a shot 15 miles. <laughs> and I've, I've since found it that's true. I think, he got, wow. I think he got booted out. Not booted out, but he got into some trouble for stealing an officer's uniform to go get cigarettes and booze. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's the hero our Alfie was. That's that's uh, that's and the hero I can get behind. So he got into some bad trouble. Probably saved him though when he was in the stocks. Yeah. Probably meant he didn't die. He was probably locked up <laughs> when yeah. they did the rush over the top. So it's not really a punishment. No. This stole some can. booze and smokes. And then he got locked up. So then he got saved. See, he, he is Jesus. <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. He had a tattoo of a ship, a sailing ship on his forearm. Because he was so old, though, and the tattoo was so crap, it just looked like a blob of ink <laughs> on his forearm. It looked like a massive, what do you call those things? A birthmark. Birthmark. <laughs> yeah, but it was a ship. My grandma had a bluebird on her forearm. Oh, does that mean she was in prison? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's what that means. Really? Your it was, a big, it was your, a big one. It was massive. Your grandma did bird. <laughs> <laughs> she did That's what porridge. It was for. Yeah. It was all the way down the forearm, oh. and she used to cover it up with. She used to wear a tabard, but with a jumper underneath, so they had long sleeves. And I only ever saw the bottom of it. Was your is your grandma? Was she a Cockney? She yeah, well, kind of. She was southeast London. 
You sound like how She's people in London Brixton. all used to sound when I first moved here. Yeah, this is what, <laughs> I don't know why I sound like this. Now they all sound like my son. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you talk like that. No judge. No. Actually, yeah, he gives me trouble. He's got, you know, he says my version of how he talks is so out of date that no one sounds like that anymore. Yeah, they've moved But it kind of sounds like that to me. That, yeah. Oh, my, oh, my God. <laughs> my days bro i love how he talks it's so cool i could sit there and listen to him and his mates talk yeah i just think these are the coolest children ever i listen to them and go fuck you know but all teenagers have had their own like when back in the 50s it was like hey daddy oh and <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey sk- jazz <laughs> yeah and, and if you listen to the rock stars from the 60s and 70s like the who and and Mick Jagger and they all talk, they were all kind of like that. All the London bands, yeah, yeah, they all talk like that, and it was all rock. It was rock and roll, you rock know. Rock and roll. We've been listening to records. We've been we listening did, to yeah, records. It was such a good record. Yeah. And Pete Townsend and, <laughs> and all them. They all talking like that, and it was. I used to think that was the coolest way of talking too, but you sound like a, a proper car. Um, when I first came to London. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got to go to an AA meeting to hear people sound like that anymore. <laughs> this is old fashioned. Yeah, you I go mean... in there, all the guys just going, well, I've had, a, I've had a tough day to day. You know, it's been tough, but uh, yeah, I, 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 sometimes I just go to an AA meeting to listen to old London. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful way of talking. I do remember Dave Longley said to me, he said, you seem like the kind of person or you sound like the kind of person that could get me either a new pair of trainers or a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it used to be a replica, but all you've got to do is what I've done here, <laughs> and I've put this part in, and now it's usable. <laughs> it said the cereal's been scrubbed off, and yeah. uh, you've never met me before, mate. <laughs> Can you... Because I, I feel like getting a gun. Can you... Are you yeah, able get to get a gun if you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure we can find one for you. Yeah, I mean, not that's here the... in Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> so, where were your folks from? They're from. Uh, so, my mum and my dad's from his side of the family, uh, the, the 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 West Country. Oh, so Devon and Scotland, which is where we got the Wilson from. Oh. We got our own. We got our own tartan. I thought I Wilson thought you were going to tell me you you came from um, uh, River Gypsies. <laughs> like, ah. like uh, Ron Wood yeah. from the Rolling Stones. They were canal gypsies. Yeah, they? they were. Yeah, yeah. By well, my mum's side of the family are from Brixton and Camberwell. And how long do you think Ron so. Wood's going to live for? Oh God, <laughs> he's made of wood now, isn't he? Surely <laughs> he's mostly wood. <laughs> he does look pretty woody. He was a cool dude, wasn't he? For an average guitar player. <laughs> Says he who can't play an instrument in his life, but he did well for himself, so he can take it. He did well. Ronnie Wood did well. I think he's I see good it. at painting. He's good he at does painting. painting. Oh, I mean, I see it, isn't it? He does good painting. He does uh, good painting. I suppose if you want to meet a modern person that reminds you of an olden days rock star, uh, you could do no worse than Noel Fielding. Yeah. He's a bit like he's. he's, he's a he, bit he is a cockney. He's a cockney. Yeah, he's, he's a proper. proper East Ender. He's a pro. I think they're proper water gypsies. And he, <laughs> I think they genuinely are. I think he, they are. I remember playing football with him, and and uh, he came out and everyone was and he was saying like when he said, "Oh yeah, I'm going to go and play football with the other comedians," and everyone was like, "What the fuck are you going to wear?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I'm going to yeah, wear yeah. football boots and and shorts and a t-shirt like everyone else. And it, so he didn't wear print. <laughs> yeah, so he didn't. Yeah, wear his winkle pickers or whatever. No, he didn't. He did it. He's very good at football, actually. Yeah, I heard he's brilliant. Yeah, I also heard Daniel Kitson's not bad. Kitson's all right. Um, what about um um Andrew Bird's all right? Andrew Bird's good. He looks like he'd be good. Yeah, lean, he's lean. He does look like he looks all kind of footballer. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, Simon Munner? He's quite good. One arm all tied uh, I've up. Heard, I've not, yeah, I haven't played with him. Oh, maybe I did years ago. Um, Russell Howard's good. Yeah, he's a good. He's a good player. Keep him coming. Um, Dane Baptiste, he's a good player. Danny Boy. Danny Boy's all right. Steve Williams is brilliant. 
Oh, is he? Yeah. He's like the head writer on Russell Howard. Yes, isn't he? he is. Yeah. Yeah, because he just disappeared from the circuit, and I thought, no, oh, I hope he's doing all right. And then I went to their studio one time, and I, oh, he's doing all right. Yeah, he's fine. I wouldn't Steve's be doing fine. gigs either. If I got that, I'd be out. <laughs> oh, I'd miss it, though. I don't know. You would miss it. I don't thought know. about this the other day when I was driving back from somewhere. But I'm like, no, I'd, if I didn't have this, I'd miss it. I like going to a little historical town yeah. and playing to 70 people in the back of an ancient pub and them all being so grateful and just, oh, you know, like somewhere in the West, somewhere in Wiltshire or something. Yeah. I love that. I'd miss that. I like that. I like that. I keep doing that. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep doing that. I think that's yeah. the, I think that's the end, Tony. I think we've Once finished. Once we build this podcast up, we're just going <laughs> to tour all the pubs. We're going to do it. That's all right. It. Finished. Nice one, boys. Silence in the court.